it took me this long to talk about it because I had to calm down, really get to the bottom of what I was feeling so that I could make this video without going off. Hello, good people, and welcome to Dignity, Exploring Human Rights in Daily Life. I'm showing my face today. If you're new here, my name is Janice. I'm an attorney, public speaker, and author of the companion book to this channel, Dignity, Human Rights in Daily Life. I want to share a story with you, which is why I had to come from behind the camera today. Like all of you, I've been navigating COVID-induced stress and so I had to take some time off because I was so burned out. And one of the ways that I like to relax is by going to the mountains. So I decided to go to California where I went to undergrad to connect with people that I love dearly and went to school with and have always kept me grounded for the past umpteen decades. Now, we're not going to get into those with the details of that. But anyway, one of the places that I like to go to is a place in Temecula, California, which is wine country in Southern California, who this little uh, winery called South Coast Winery and Resort, because I love having a view of the hills. It's, it reminds me of my days in undergrad when I used to drive up to Crestline in the San Bernardino Mountains every Sunday and just veg out, collect myself. And it was a form of meditation for me. So I knew that going to this place was just going to be what the doctor ordered. I never had an incident there, but I was so stressed out that when I landed, I forgot how to use my cell phone. They pick a picture. I lost my favorite black blazer, so I had to buy another one. And I lost my credit card. Now, this is typical of me. I've had experiences with trauma in the past from losing my father to 9-11 to a cancer diagnosis. And so I recognized the symptoms that I have when I'm traumatized or stressed out. And what I will share with you are the three stages of stress. The first one is the alarm stage when you first get news of a cancer diagnosis or the loss of a loved one or 9-11. Then the second stage is fight or flight, which you've probably heard of before. And that's when you either Buckle down and use uh, stress to your advantage. And, and there are ways to do that. And then the third stage is the exhaustion stage. And this is when you're exposed to trauma for more than six months, which is all of us. I realized just how traumatized I was when I landed in California, started losing clothing, credit card, forgot how to use my cell phone. And I made stops before I got to Temecula. I called American Express and let them know that I had lost my credit card. I was headed to South Coast Winery and asked them to deliver the card to that particular hotel. And so they, they called the winery, confirmed that I had reservations there and said they would deliver it the next day. So I drive up to Temecula and let them know I'm the person that American Express confirmed my reservation for. And so they wanted a car for incidentals. And I thought it wouldn't be a problem. American Express told me that the car that I had on file at the time shouldn't be a problem. And so they wanted something else. Well, I did have a backup credit card. The problem was this, it was expired. And it wasn't until I got home from my trip that I realized the card that I should have had with me was still in the envelope. I hadn't even taken it out of the envelope yet. So needless to say, that card was declined. So I called that bank and tell them what happened. They said, no, no, that's the wrong card. I said, well, let me use my, my debit card. And so I only had $500 available on the card because this is something I need to pay bills. And so I told them, you know, this is how much I have available. I can go ahead and use it. But no, they wanted to hold $800, $834 to be at that. So they said, okay, we'll let you stay for one night and then you'll have to leave the next day. And the next morning, I check in to see if the car had arrived. It had, this was like 10 o'clock in the morning or something. And so they get, put me on the phone with some man who told me if the car didn't arrive that day, I would have to leave because I probably exhausted my um, tab for incidentals. I said, look, I checked in yesterday. I have $500 on my tab for incidentals. I only called, I only used room service and there's no way I'm gonna be spending $500 while I'm here. Oh, you just checked in yesterday? Oh, okay, well, you can stay another day. But if that card doesn't come in because things happen, and if the card doesn't show up today, you're going to have to leave tomorrow. Well, I call American Express, they gave me a tracking number. They said, the car's gonna arrive at 4.30 today. So I let them know this. And so they were ready to kick me out 
Meanwhile, when I was on hold with American Express or the bank, I was on hold for 50 minutes the first day that I um, arrived. And while I'm on hold, I'm observing the receptionist ordering microwave ovens for, for other guests. So I'm thinking to myself, hmm, I, this is my third time here. I didn't know that I could request a microwave. So as I mentioned, I had ordered room service, couldn't finish my meal, so I had it in the refrigerator. And so before I left, you know, at the second day when they told me I could stay another night, I asked for a microwave oven. Actually, what happened was this. I spent a day out with, with a friend, came back when I arrived, the card had arrived. So, I, you know, I took care of all of that. And then I asked for a microwave oven. So the receptionist formed her lips to tell me, we don't have that many microwave ovens. Okay, I could appreciate that. But when she said the following, if we don't send a microwave oven to your room, you're welcome to use the microwave oven in the staff room. But of course, you have to have a staff member accompany you. And I was floored. I mean, I'm still stressed out. It took me a while to process it. But immediately I thought of Jim Crow. And as I'm turning this over in my mind, I'm like, why does this hit further home to me? And then I remembered my father had an MBA in finance. He got it in the 50s. He would go down to Wall Street for job interviews. And when he showed up, he was shown the service entrance. There was a pit in my stomach until I got home. It took me this long to talk about it because I had to calm down, really get to the bottom of what I was feeling so that I could make this video without going off. This is an example of a microaggression and whether or not it was intentional to offend me is not the issue. When it comes to microaggressions, it's not about the intention of the sender, it's about the feelings of the receiver. And I even did a reality check with a friend and he immediately knew what I was experiencing. And I think for a lot of people who see this video, and please share it because this is an example of living in America while Black. And while it doesn't happen every day, it happens often enough for it to be a little cut in the psyche. And I say that because of this. When the Chauvin verdict came down, I cried like a baby because it was the first time in my 65 years that I saw law enforcement guilty as charged on all counts. And I have been watching this since I was seven or eight years old. My first encounter with law enforcement, killing people of color with impunity was when a Brooklyn cop shot and killed a 10 year old boy under the guise of mistaking him as an adult. And when the showing verdict came down, I realized that I had been absorbing the offense of watching people of color being assaulted by law enforcement with impunity. And it was just a cry, it was a cry of relief. And what I experienced in California at South Coast Winery is an example on a micro level as to what it's like to be constantly barraged with being treated differently. And with that, I want to remind you to always live your life with dignity. Bye-bye.